Thank you for inviting us here. It was not easy to come here, but <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> um, we made it after changing three or four flights. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm, I'm Jason Leguar. I'm coming from the General Workers Union, from the largest union in Malta. Um, I've been working there 13 years, and this most probably would be my last conference uh, before taking my seat next week in the European and Economic Social Committee, um, which I'm looking forward to. And hopefully I will continue to give my utmost to represent the workers in the best way possible. Uh, look, at the moment, talking a little bit, even to continue on what Sharon was saying in Malta, the, the issue of the pandemic in Malta is, is not so clear. So uh, before going to going into information and consultation, which at the moment is very important for us, even due to, the, to what is happening. Um, I think we are so lucky that uh, we are coming out of seven good years of um, economic growth, where Malta had six, seven percent economic growth constantly, year after year. And then the 2nd of March, something happened that changed all the situation. But lucky, lucky for us, lucky or, or, or not lucky, I, I will say why later on. Um, the government of Malta had um, enough funding to help the employees uh, during this difficult time. Um, at the moment, we are experiencing around 100 and 150 cases every day of, of, of COVID-19 that for Malta as Sharon said, is, is a big number, but lucky for us, the, the average age is of 38 years. Mm -hmm. We had 49, that's still now. Um, the unfortunate situation was that we had some, some issues at the, at, at, at the elderly ho homes, and there we had problems, and unfortunately we lost um, some people who are living at, at, those, at, at those, those homes. The impact of information and consultation. Um, as I said, at the, at the moment, the issue of information and consultation, especially where there are the unions involved, <clears throat> we are seeing that in the last patch, even if even Malta, the situation was still what was good already. But with, with the issue of the pandemic, um, the employers and the, and the representatives of the employees came more on the same table. Mm -hmm. Why? Because obviously we had to discuss, even on national level, how are we going to move forward? How are we going to discuss with the government? What were the priorities of the employees and even of the employers in, this, in these difficult times? So what I can tell you is that in April, we had, it was the first time that the, the the social, the Maltese social dialogue on a national level reached a unanimous agreement. It was the first time in Malta um, where it was decided that all employees working in the tourism industry, that in Malta would mean around 100,000 in a population of 400,000. So, so to put everything in perspective, we're going to, to, to be given 800 euros um, monthly, every four weeks, sorry, um, with, all the, with, all, with, with, with all the sector closed, basically. So that was a big achievement for us. That happened because of information and consultation. And mostly it happened because before we went to discuss with the government, it was one of those times where the employers and the employees sit down together for the benefit of both parties to see how we could do a deal um, which would be greatly appreciated both by the employers and by the employees. Why? Because uh, due to the fact that we had a lot of economic growth, we have uh, a lot of vacancies in Malta. Mm -hmm. So the tourism industry was saying, look, it doesn't make sense for us to lay off people, which are good people and experienced people, um, most probably in, in, in a year's time, everything would, would come back to normal or almost to normal. And then we need once again to recruit people, to, 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 to give them training, the issue of loyalty. Mm -hmm. 
So for the employers, this, this, this agreement was, was very important. Uh, most of all, it was important more for them rather for the employees, not only for, for, the, for the sake of the, that the government gave them uh, the, the rest of mind that they are going to keep their employees while paying, paying the government, but obviously because they were going to keep their best workforce possible. Um, we had a little bit of problem with the third country nationals, unfortunately. And here I'm talking where the information and consultation does not work. Mm -hmm. Where does it not work? Obviously, where you don't have the unions involved. There we saw uh, companies lay off people in a very, in a very degradable ma manner, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> using their last wage to pay their travel expenses. Um, and unfortunately, we, we came to know these things after these people left Malta. So um, we saw some people going in, in a very degradable manner, obviously where the information and consultation did not work. It did not work, not because we sat down and uh, the, the agreement didn't materialize, but because of the fact that the unions were, were not involved. Mm -hmm. um, Normally, uh, when we talk about restructuring for empl employees, it means redundancies, it means layoffs, it means all these things. But lucky, luckily for us at the moment, not looking at the pandemic, obviously, restructuring means how are we going to train more the employees mm -hmm. to get more, but, but when I say more, not, not physically, to gain more from the employee because obviously he, if he learns more he can give a better a better uh, service to the company mm -hmm. that that we are looking in fact um, most of the restructurings that we had in the last years meant that the employees uh, we made courses for the employees uh, the government helped as well um, obviously with 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 the foundations so that we made upgrading uh, of the employees, they earn more money, but obviously they will hold more responsibility. And um, in, in, in those type of restructurings, uh, we had a lot of them, lucky, luckily for us. And what we are seeing is that after the pandemic, most probably we will be having more. To tell you the truth, even during the pandemic, we are having companies making these types of restructurings because they are saying that even if this is a difficult patch, mm -hmm. we are let's use this difficult patch so to have our employees ready. So when to move on. tomorrow this pandemic is over, we don't have to train the employees, but the employees are there trained, and as soon as we can we can go, we can go. In fact, uh, the government is. Uh, this, this, this week we had the budget and the government is already uh, seeing that next year still we will be having around 5% of GDP growth. Um, obviously this is happening, uh, as, as I stated again, due to the fact that the government did the, gov the COVID wage supplement. Uh, basically all, all the people are still employed. We only had 1.5% of, of layoffs, so 1.5% when comparing to, to what's happening, especially in Europe, in other countries, it's, it's, it's very minimal. Um, and those 1.5%, the government is giving them training, so to be prepared, so that if any company would like to recruit, they would be ready prepared um, to, go to, go, to, go, to go for it. Um, one other point about restructuring is that in Malta, unfortunately, we are losing. Um, <clears throat> we, we are not having enough people who are going for certain industries, and we really need, need those. For example, we are, we are lacking a lot of mechanical technicians. Mm -hmm. Why? Because most of the parents are saying, look, I don't want my son, my daughter as a mechanical technician because I don't want, to, I want, I don't want them to work in oil. In reality, today it's everything state of the art, um, and it's not true. So, at, at the moment, we are discussing with the government and um, to go into schools as well as a union 
and to give feedback to, to children, especially those 15, 16 year olds who are going to make important decisions for their future. That today, when we talk about certain positions, it's not that if you go for them, it's something that they, you can earn good money. You no, it's not. It's not how how you think about it when when you see it from the outside. Um, and most probably in the in the coming weeks, discussions will start. Um, so even for unions, that we can go to schools to give this important information to the students. Because if we're not going to have people who excel in these um, important industries, we need all the time to import employees. Mm -hmm. To put you in picture, in the last three years, Malta, um, we, have, we had an intake of around 80,000 foreign employees. 80,000. When considering that our uh, working population in Malta is around a quarter of a million. So you can understand the economic growth that happened, but unfortunately there are certain positions that we are not finding the right people to work in those uh, positions. And that is being discussed even as part of this restructuring. And um, obviously we are trying to help even the employers on, on this issue. Um, one point that Sharon mentioned, and I don't want to take more time because I know that after, after lunch break, it's not the best time to discuss. Um, it was the issue of agree if, if, if you, you rather be there and do something or die yeah. during this pandemic. And that's true. Unfortunately, we have some sectors, especially one, one social media medium that is making life hell for people is Facebook at the moment. Um, obviously, because there are a lot of people that I, are hyping always in the bad ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree totally with Sharon that we need to move forward. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are discussing with the employers that we need to go forward. Um, in Malta, would, luckily for us, we didn't go for a full lockdown. Mm -hmm. We went just for a partial lockdown. <clears throat> and I think that that was one of the points that led our country to even keep on going. Um, believe it or not, till today, we are still having people saying that we should go on lockdown. Um, I don't agree. Yeah. Fully, I don't agree. Um, and I'm saying this with responsibility even to our members, because we know that if we go to a, to a full lockdown, yeah. that would mean that all the system, all the economic well, system close. would crash, yeah. would stop, would crash. Um, and obviously the problems would be on our side then, because the employees would then come and knock the door yeah. and say, look, we need your help. So I think that to, to, to wrap it up, the information and consultation in Malta in, these last, in this last year was crucial. Mm -hmm. um, even when it comes to restructuring, because the restructurings we were talking about were not the restructuring, the normal restructurings mm -hmm. where employees yeah. are laid off. Mm -hmm. um, they were restructurings to see how we can deal with the economic growth that the island have, obviously, and how we can help the employees to go and train themselves to earn more money and to have more responsibility. So I think the issue is finding the right, the right balance um, between employers and employees and take the best out of it. It's not always easy. Um, but I think that in the case of Malta, uh, we succeeded to do it on the 95%, I would say. From my side, that's all. If there are any questions, I would be more than happy to take them.